Hello everybody, welcome back. Today's review is on the Bad Kitty series. My name is Robin Norgren and I am a third grade teacher, although I've also taught kindergarten, first and second grade. And so I know a little bit about what it takes to get a child to the place that they are reading fluently and reading to understand. And that's kind of like my mission uh, these days is to try to help you as a parent or as a teacher to really be able to track this through what it is that you see your students or your children reading. And so what I've been doing is I've been reading books that would normally be available either at the library or at a scholastic book fair or maybe even at your local thrift store that you're picking it up and the kids are excited about it and I just want to give you some tips and tricks to help you know how to support them so if this is something you're interested in make sure to like and subscribe this channel all right so let's talk about the bad kitty series so for first of all what I look at is I look at a couple things I'm looking at um, first of all this the type of uh, book it is and it is indeed a chapter book there are about 128 pages in this chapter book um, I also check to see if there's a series now you can see very quickly on the back that there's at least five and I want to say there are close to 20 uh, books in this series so again if your child likes this series that's kind of good news because you don't have to continuously search for uh, series for them to be to be working through and and um, enjoying because you've right now if you've hit the lottery with this one you'll 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 have a at least a good amount of time where they're enjoying this particular series all right so this is the bad kitty series it's by an author named Nick Brule or Bruel, B-R-U-E-L. And um, this one is called Bad Kitty Gets a Bath. So kind of an interesting story, right? Um, because it's something that's super familiar to kids. Even if they don't have a cat, they know, probably have heard some of the things about cats and how they don't necessarily like to take baths. And so it's uh, right away, you can tell from the cover that it's going to be a very cute story because you can see the terror in his eyes at the idea of getting, getting a bath. All right, the other thing I like to pay attention to is um, number of pages, which there are 128 pages. And so that's good on the surface, but then what I do is I go into the book and I see, is there a good ratio of words to pictures? Or is this a very heavy picture book um, that just happens to have some words around it? And why I say that is because, you know, we all love the idea of kids reading chapter books, but they're not all chapter books are alike and so we really do need to pay attention to that once we're giving this um, this opportunity for a child to, to learn and grow and be confident as a reader we want to make sure they're actually getting true literacy and not just this false sense of confidence that I can read chapter books now okay so that being said I then go to check to see if there is a table of context with a table of contents with chapters and there are true chapters something that I find very interesting in this book that I don't always find is they have they have an area for let me see if I can see that at the bottom a glossary which I was delightfully surprised in about because you don't find that very often in books that they actually give students a glossary for those words that they may not understand or there's this first time introduction to a word now that being said once again I'd have to warn you that 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 indicator that there's a glossary there might cause you to think that any word that is not necessarily a word that would have been introduced to a child by third grade is going to be in the back and actually that is not so there were a, a, quite a few words that I um, circled because I, I read through the book um, that I would say the child or the student may not know what they are um, but if you uh, look at a book says that says it has the glossary the assumption would be that any word that might fall under that category would be in the glossary and actually that is not true and it also is kind of a silly glossary let me tell you what I what I mean one of the words in the glossary is bath do you see that and then it says a word you should never say out loud around a kitty well okay guys that's not a true glossary right so it's got some it's got some words in here that you that they may not know and then they have words that again there's just for the com the comedic factor to it because it is actually a very funny book um, without giving too many spoilers 
here is a picture of the author's cat, Esmeralda, and Esmeralda also shows up in the glossary, okay? Um, but anyway, just as the title says, it is a story of a cat uh, that gets a, ba a bath. It's called Bad Kitty, and that is the series Bad Kitty, but you don't really know yet why we're calling him a bad kitty, okay? All right, so let's look again at the words to picture ratio. So as you can see, there are not a lot of words on this, these pages. And you'll see there are sometimes layouts where there is maybe one or two words. So we're, we're pushing that wor the um, page count up, but it's not giving you true, um, what you would anticipate to be the number of words that you would find in a book that has this many pages. So something to look out for again. Not to say that this is not a book that your child should not read. It's just to say that you wanna make sure that, let's say for example, where the red fern grows, right? There might be a picture in there, but that is very much um, word exclusive. And I say that because then what has to happen is your child, as they're reading um, the words in the book, they really have to have an understanding of what those words mean. Otherwise, they're not going to have any, and they have to be able to find it, the understanding by way of context clues in the actual sentences, whereas this is going to really rely on the pictures in order to drive that story. So it's something to keep in mind. Um, Another thing that I noticed is um, there are a couple what I call bright spots in this in this book. There's something called the Daily News, spelled N-O-O-Z, and there's something called Uncle Murray's Fun Facts. Now, Uncle Murray's Fun Facts actually are little um, interesting pieces of information about the cat or the theme of the book. Again, a really nice touch that I have not seen in other books. And then the daily news is actually a news update that they give in the story. Let me see if I can find one. And it tells the story of someone that they know, entire family flees for life. And it's because they tried to give the cat a bath. It's very much in a newspaper format. So again, I would say this book is probably geared, obviously you can always just read this book to your child, so a preschool, kindergarten, first grade. I would say second grade would be a really nice uh, starting point for this book. Again, it would have to be a side by side because there are words in here that may not, um, that your child may not understand and it's not showing up in the glossary. Words like serve, and decency, and again, these might be words that they might have difficulty sounding out if they're not uh, uh, fluent in. All right, so in conclusion, I would say this uh, series, Bad Kitty, is great for ages seven to 10, so that would be hmm, about second grade. I mean, uh, it does say seven to 10. Oh, I would say we'd be pushing it to say that a fifth grader might enjoy this. I would say, um, this is the recommendation from Scholastic, seven to 10. I would say kindergarten, first grade would love the story to be read to them. Second grade, I think you would have no problem reading this with some assistance. Again, you know my philosophy if you've been here for a while about having a dictionary side by side as you're reading uh, through the book so that we can easily look it up and make that a part of the repertoire of our vocabulary that we're trying to um, absorb uh, for so that we can become better writers along with being more um, comprehensive readers. Um, and I would say fourth grade, yes, you'd be able to take this no problem. They'd probably finish it in one sitting and really enjoy it. Um, and then I always like to say at the end of these, if you have any um, series that you are interested in me reviewing, please make sure and put it in the comments down below. I would be happy to do that. Um, I have plenty of books that I am going to be sharing. So please make sure again to like and subscribe so that you can keep track of these books, um, especially if you have even younger children. I also have a series going for early readers that I think you would be interested in seeing as well. All right. Thank you for stopping by.